I'm Anna Middleton and I'm a social scientist from the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute and I run projects that explore the impact of genomics on people. When you do a whole genome sequence, you're clearly looking at 20,000 genes and also the bits of DNA between those genes. Um, and there's a lot of information in there that you could choose to look at. Um, but it's not like doing an X-ray of the lung to explore pneumonia and then you inadvertently see a tumour you weren't expecting. Because in sequencing you have to overlay lots of computer algorithms to actually filter the information because there's so much of it. So you don't accidentally stumble upon things, but you can choose to look at things or not look at things. When you do a sequence, you're usually trying to answer a clinical question. So like, why has this person got breast cancer? Is it an inherited sort of breast cancer? But while you're answering that question, you could choose to look at other things at the same time if you wanted to. And that's called searching for incidental findings, or it could be called um, looking for secondary findings, that's the term they use in the US, or it could be um, looking for additional looked for findings, and that's what Genomics England use. So they're all talking about the same thing, making a choice to actively look for additional things unrelated to the clinical question you're trying to answer. Because the genome is so large, the question is, what do you choose to look at? And you could choose to look at anything, really. So ranging from genes linked to conditions that are treatable, preventable, that you can act on, through to genes linked to conditions that you can do nothing about, through to genes linked to conditions that you could pass on to your children, through to looking at how you respond to medications, through to uncertain data. I mean, there's a whole range of things that you could choose to look at. And so the ethical dimension to this is, what do you choose to look at and who makes that decision and how do you interpret that data? It's very interesting choosing um, conditions and genes that will go on a list because it's actually quite subjective. So one person's idea of something that's serious and actionable is not the same as another person's and it's also possibly quite different from what a patient's perspective is as well. Um, the other thing to bring into this is what's technically possible and what is the most easily interpretable. So all these things kind of come into the decision making about which genes go onto a list um, that's eventually used. But from an ethical point of view, I'm kind of interested in um, whose voice is loudest, really. A decision has been made in the UK to only look for genes related to conditions that are serious and actionable. The debate about incidental findings has been very interesting because we don't actually know when you're trying to predict disease whether it is actually going to happen or not. So if you predict or try to foresee that somebody has a high risk of getting breast cancer, say, and you're uncertain about that, and then they go on to have a risk-reducing mastectomy and have their ovaries removed, that's really major surgery. I mean, it really is. Um, and you don't do that lightly, and you shouldn't really be doing that on uncertain information. Um, you know, there's a risk of procedures going wrong, um, you know, quite profound impacts on health from having a preventative surgery that you may not needed to have had. So in the UK, I think we are trying to be quite cautious and careful and give information to people that we are sure about. Mm -hmm.